Hi there, this is Dr. Leon Honam here from the Rofi Clinic where we're going to deliver another lecture for you, making it fun and simple, very importantly, making science simple and relevant for everyone. Stay tuned, subscribe and give us a like and give us topics which you are interested in. Today's topic is very interesting. It's about post-COVID cough. Many people after COVID had a persistent cough. In fact, many people think it is long COVID. First of all, persistent cough need not be long COVID. In fact, we like to define long COVID differently. Watch our YouTube series on the long COVID to understand more about it. This time round, we want to try to tackle the nagging cough which you have. In fact, the principles and theory of this nagging cough is very applicable to chronic cough from other conditions. So watch it even if it's not COVID or COVID related because it might just help you. First and foremost, I want to remind everyone that this video does not replace your medical consultation with your family doctor or your specialist. You see, this is just a guide and I just want to use this to try to open your mind, open your perception onto what are the multiple different causes of cough there are and perhaps you can change some of your lifestyle so as to better deal with the cough. Cough is annoying, cough can affect your sleep and it comes at the most inappropriate time. So again, speak to your medical doctor, speak to your family physician. They are truly your best friends to help you get rid of your problem. If your family physician can't solve the problem, you might see a respiratory physician or an infectious disease specialist to try to help get to the root of it. The causes of cough are obviously many and in many situations you would require a chest x-ray to complete the evaluation or in some cases even a scan of the chest. So don't rely on this video alone to solve your problems because there are just too many causes. And very importantly, be patient. Chronic cough, well, it won't just go over way after just one day. It takes a bit of time. Use the measures which I'm going to suggest to you together with the help of your family physician. Perhaps we can get rid of your cough once and for all. The impetus for doing this slide was that many patients came to me with cough and they said it was long COVID. But if you broke it down for them, if you actually go through the details, you realize that the chronic cough was quite separate from long COVID. We can actually break down the cause of the cough, treat it, and in turn, the patient is relieved of the cough. And honestly, long COVID is a curse. Chronic cough is not pleasant, but certainly we have a lot more treatment modalities to try to get rid of it. And we often can be successful if we work in partnership with your doctor. Only when the patient and the doctor work together do we get the best results. So what do these patients with COVID tell me? They'll say that there's a persistent itch in the cough. You just have to cough it up because it's so annoying. Or there's a phlegm there that's stuck and you have to keep coughing to clear it. If you don't clear it, it will remain there. Coughs that comes in bulks. Cough, 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 cough. And finally, it's over. It doesn't just come one cough or two cough, but they go into runs of it. And you realize that sometimes the cough can be triggered by something. It could be cold air or the food which you eat. So as you watch this video and before you go and see your doctor, start observing your coughs. What triggers it? And with that, you can actually get a clue to the etiology of your cough. So this set of slides, this lecture is just to try to give you uh, the insights into the origins of the post-COVID cough. And the list is certainly not exhaustive. I intend to just try to help you to be more perceptive to your own symptoms and in turn, hopefully get rid of your chronic cough. Again, in partnership with your doctor. There you have it. These are the four most common reasons why you would actually have a chronic
chronic cough after COVID infection or in fact any viral infection. We have post nasal drip here as well as sinusitis so it's from the airways above above your nose. You get gastroesophageal reflux where acid contents from the stomach goes up heats the food pipe and in turn affects your throat. It could be an airway problem asthma, bronchitis or hypersensitive airways. We're going to talk a lot more about that later. And lastly, neuropathic cough, where it is an irritation of the nerve. It's a nerve problem. So very importantly, when you cough, you are forcing air out at about 10 to 15 meters per second. You translate that to kilometers per hour, that's 36 to 54 kilometers per hour, or even 22 to 33 miles per hour. It is actually very, very fast. It's equivalent to you driving on the road, putting your hair out, come again, dry your hair out. So you can actually mess up your whole hair. So that's important because it would describe to your, you what your throat will be like if you keep coughing and coughing and coughing. You will damage the inside of it. What I really want to tell you is this. The first lesson for chronic cough is try to suppress your cough. If you keep coughing non-stop, you will in turn tear the insides of your throat and this will injure the inside of your throat and this will cause more symptoms. So try to suppress some of your cough, cut down the, 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 the speed of air that comes out. This will help your cough subsequently. First reason, post-nasal drip or sinusitis. Many of us do get nasal congestion and you have blocked nose, runny nose after COVID infection. Actually, you have it during COVID infection and it tends to persist. When you lie down, you can imagine it falls backwards towards the back of the nose and then when you, fall, when you lie down, it falls into the throat, lands on the throat, it feels very uncomfortable. So what you really want to do is to clear the nose. Clear the nose, that way it doesn't fall backwards. What are the ways in which to help with the post-nasal drip? It is fluid. You must have enough fluids, have enough hydration. Number two, one trick which I really like is sinus rinse. It's salt water going into your nose, then coming on the other side. So this will help to rinse out all the gunk into the front so it doesn't fall onto the back. Inhaled steam does work as well. And lastly, and in partnership with your doctor, use of a steroid spray or even oral steroids in the bad cases. It will help to shrink the congested uh, nose or even a sinusitis and in turn you will feel much better. Now this is a slide to show you two pictures, sinus rinse. Uh, this is a sinus rinse which I do recommend to my patients very very much in your top picture. You can see you're squeezing water into the nose and it comes out of the other hole. This will help to rinse it all the way to the back. Very effective, very good. Please don't do water. Playing water inside there is extremely uncomfortable. It comes in salt sachets and if you want to make your own salt sachets, Google search the term sinus salt rinse solution and then you get the recipe you can make it on your own that will save you some money but honestly each packet of it isn't very expensive but it's incredibly uh, convenient on the lower picture you see something called a neti pot a neti pot is where you put the salt solution in the water again you flush it into one nostril and let gravity go in and wash it on the other side. It will work as well. Now I'm a bit lazy. I don't like to tilt my head and use my position to try to drain it. So I do prefer the squeeze method. Again, this is all down to individual choices. Now this picture which you see here is inhaled steam. Now you don't really need to put it so close to your face and this is really a big bowl of hot water. So please be very careful, you can scald yourself. What I really like to do is to put it in a small mug, typical coffee mug, hot water with steam coming out. Be very careful, put it in front of you, 
you could use the towel so as to direct the steam upwards into your nose or even just to use a piece of paper as long as the steam comes up you breathe in through your nose so as you breathe in through your nose use your nostril that way it will help to clear the passages i've got another lazy man's method when you do shower and you shower with hot water as the water comes in and you're rinsing yourself breathe in and out through your nose with the hot steaming water that will help to clear the nostrils as well and yes you can use the water to wipe your nose that will help out tremendously that's my lazy man trick my lazy man strip next thing is actually gastroesophageal reflux all of us have our stomach and that makes a lot of strong acids with very very low ph reading there is a valve right sitting above the stomach it's called the esophageal sphincter now that sphincter is to prevent the acid from going up but there are many many causes uh, that actually forces acid up uh, and, in, and at the same time, it might just relax the muscle. When it relaxes the muscle, the acid goes up and burns the inside. Remember biology? Your, your throat area is alkaline, your esophagus is alkaline, and what you have is acid. When acid mixes with alkaline, it is complete disaster. It actually causes a lot more reaction. Number two, do you remember when you cough, you are using your abdominal muscles that forces your tummy smaller to force the air out from your lungs through your mouth. But what gets squeezed at the same time as you, as you cough is actually your stomach. So your stomach gets squeezed and you can imagine the poor muscular sphincter would in turn be forced and forced and forced and one day you give way and your reflux happens. So coughing will actually aggravate this gastroesophageal reflux. And remember the rule number one, which I told you a few slides ago, control your cough because you are going to control gastroesophageal reflux. Now, how can you tell you are having reflux? Number one, when you lie down in bed. When you lie down in bed, the acid mechanically is much easier for it to go up your esophagus and cause coughing. So people will notice it say about one, two hours after sleeping or in the severe cases, it can happen quite quickly thereafter. They notice that certain foods will trigger it. Uh, we have spicy dishes down in Singapore. We have the laksas and the misiams. Uh, the fatty food, uh, if you have a huge fatty milk. Uh, for me, even a full cream milk can actually trigger reflux for me because the fat in the full cream milk uh, can uh, just trigger reflux. Coffee, coffee is a known trigger. So these are some of the foods. How would some of the people describe it? Well, they might describe it as acid brash. If you this uh, acid coming up, uh, it's like burning and it can cause chest pain. Uh, it can cause chest tightness because the response is that everything, including your esophagus, will just contract. You have this tightness feeling to it. So acid brash is another one. And sometimes people say, burp. You can hear the air coming out because in truth, your sphincter has released, some of the acid has started going up. What I would recommend is, number one, please, 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 diet control. You have to be disciplined. You have to be disciplined with avoiding oily food, fatty food, spicy, spicy food, and acidic food. Coffee, no, no coffee. Okay, so I, you might like coffee, but spare your cough, spare your stomach, spare your throat by avoiding coffee for a while. Uh, there's a medication known as proton pump inhibitor. There are many, many versions of it from omeprazole to isomeprazole to even um, uh, pentoprazole. So you have to work in partnership with your doctors again and check if you need these medications. And of course, sleep, sleep, sleep. Stress, stress is a known factor, uh, known causative factor for gastroesophageal reflux. So I need you to have adequate rest, less stress, and you'll be fine. Next, airway issues, point number three. So under airway issues, for some reason, your lungs, let, let's assume there's no pneumonia, etc. Uh, your lungs airways may have problems like bronchitis. 
where the airways get choked up with a lot of secretions and they'll give you a wet cough. Sometimes it's actually just plain old asthma. You have asthmatic tendencies or you're known to have asthma and the COVID triggered the asthma. What you need is actually asthma tre treatment. The last thing is actually post-viral bronchial hyperreactivity syndrome. Big, long name, but it's actually very simple. After the infection attacks the airways, the airways become very, very sensitive and goes into hyperreaction. Think of it this way. If your arm, you scalded your arm and your skin has since recovered, two weeks later, you pour cold water on it, the arm will still hurt. So bronchial hyperreactivity syndrome just means your airways are very sensitive. Don't annoy it. Don't annoy with smoke, don't annoy with uh, cold air, cold water, or something too pungent, you will end up coughing. It's, it's like our spouse who's just a bit annoyed with everything. If you just touch it, the, our spouse just go into a hedgehog, okay, hedgehog fashion, and that's what happens in your airways and in turn you'll cough. And these people will often tell you that cold air, cold water will trigger it, and night when it's colder, you'll trigger it, or if you exercise, as you exercise, you'll trigger it. As you exercise, you breathe in and out very quickly, you can trigger the uh, airway hypersensitivity or your asthma, and in turn, trigger all these symptoms. So what would I do? Very simple. I would actually avoid cold air, cold drinks. I would actually drink warm, warm water, uh, I would be expose myself to warm air. Remember, earlier on we actually talked about uh, steam inhalation. It really helps very much. Next, you need to work in partnership with your doctor. Do you need steroids uh, inhaler? Or steroids with a beta-2 agonist inhaler? Or just a beta-2 agonist inhaler alone? I do like a steroids together with a beta-2 agonist inhaler. This will help me with the help patients much, much better. In some cases, I do use oral steroids. And I decide on that when I auscultate your chest and see how severe it is. So that when you auscultate, you're looking for wheezing sound. It goes, hmm, hmm, the kind of sounds which you can hear through the chest with the stethoscope. Some people will notice that as you breathe in the air, it's, it's normal. As you breathe out, it is slower. Or what we call prolonged expiratory phase. So normal breathing is like this. <gasps> but in the case of uh, asthmatic tendency or airways hyperreactivity, you go <gasps> <gasps> going out is actually a little bit more difficult. So think about all this and work in partnership with your doctor. We can actually solve this. Next, point four neuropathic cough. What it really means is that the nerves inside the throat are damaged and anything that touches it, annoys it, could actually trigger it. So there are multiple triggers. It could be usually the environmental, cold, uh, cold air, uh, the temperatures, the pH is something too acidic or too spicy, the fluids which you take, you don't like it. You literally have to be very, very fussy in what you drink and what you're exposed to because your nerves are really raw. Think of it again as a spouse which, um, which, has, which is very, very annoyed with what we have done. There's uh, irritated no uh, nerves there. So calm the, calm the nerves, don't irritate the nerves, just be very gentle and thereafter you get better. In fact, the more you cough, the more you damage it. Very simple, because you're tearing the inside. So what you really, really want to do is to soothe the throat. Soothe the throat. What can I soothe the throat with? Honey plus warm water. Honey plus warm water is really great. Um, the, the, there is scientific data to say honey plus warm water actually works. Don't take neat honey. Neat honey can be too harsh for the throat at the back. Now, there's another drug which you have to work in partnership with your doctor called amitriptyline. Amitriptyline kind of desensitizes the nerves at the back and the doctor can actually prescribe it for you and work in coordination with you. 
the drug can cause some side effects from constipation to difficulty passing urine and even lightheadedness and giddiness. Well, the good news is that it helps you to sleep too. So if you've been difficult for you to sleep uh, because of your chronic cough, taking it might actually help you to sleep by suppressing your cough and help to induce sleep. There you have it. This is my honey plus warm water. I love it. Honey plus warm water, drink it. It is really soothing. You are going to help you recover your throat much faster. There you have it. We've gone through four main reasons why you could have a chronic cough after COVID especially. Post-nasal drip sinusitis, gastroesophageal reflux, and airways, asthma, bronchitis, hypersensitive airways, etc. Very importantly, I do think neuropathic cough is rather prominent as a cause uh, for COVID infections. Again, you do not need to think of just COVID alone. Other viruses can cause similarly, uh, similar chronic cough. Think about this and use this to help you. I want to stress to you that the, we kind of separated down into four causes, but they don't run independently of each other. In fact, you could actually have all four happening at the same time or a mixture of two or three of them. So don't think in silos. Uh, use in silos to help you identify your symptoms. But at the end of it all, you could actually have all four of these causes causing your chronic cough. Unless you tackle all four of them, you do not get rid of it. Now, the last one of the things which I want to stress is Honey plus warm water, it really helps. Help to suppress your cough because each time when you cough, air comes at about 50 kilometers per hour inside. It really damages the inside of your throat very much. Last thing I want to emphasize is this. This video does not replace your doctor. It helps you to recognize, to be more perceptive to the cause of your cough. And at the end of the day, it is how you work in partnership with your doctor that you could actually get rid of this annoying cough. So all the best in getting rid of your chronic cough. Share with us your experience and give some comments at the end of it all. That comes to the end of the talk. Do you have a follow-up question for us? Let us know. Leave us a comment. In fact, we would love to hear from you very, very much. Remember to click subscribe and follow this channel. Till the next program, see you again. Bye.